we have a very negative outlook on this based on the testing policies right now, Bobby, uh, with what we saw with Texas A&M. They're bowing out of the Gator Bowl. Gator Bowl's trying to find a replacement. I think that's going to be difficult to do, but uh, maybe they can find a team. like We, we mentioned Missouri, who plays tonight against Army. Uh, Paul mentioned Florida, who plays tomorrow, although they may be a more difficult sell. I'm just finding a team that would fill in and, and face Wake Forest. Sucks for the Gator Bowl, and I, th- I think it's probably just the start of some teams that that face an outbreak on you know college campus this time of year we're seeing it in every other league so it's not going to hide from college football and we saw the playoff uh announce the the protocols for that too where we could see forfeits or no contest declared there's there's craziness ahead right now yeah it's uh it's unfortunate to see that i i, I struggle with it when you were talking about missouri playing like that would be them playing army and then playing a second bowl game yeah is that yeah, they would. That's need a, awesome. They, they need a waiver for that, but that would give them ten days because the the Gator Bowl is on the thirty first. So if you know if they if Drinkwitz and and that crew wanted to do it, and it, you wouldn't want to get a team that had dispersed and gone home for Christmas break, like a five and seven team is not on campus right now. So it's tough. Like Rutgers was offered the opportunity, Paul was saying, and Rutgers said no because it's hard to get everybody back on campus and practicing and getting ready for a game. Whereas if you're in the if you're in the rhythm of it and everybody's willing to do it, why not do it for the exposure? Oh, you knew, and you know Drinkwitz, so he he's never going to miss a trick to be able to yeah. talk a little trash to somebody and like make sure you know that he can help bolster his brand. I, I give him a lot of credit. Hey, then see boy, I would hope that they would give him a waiver for this. The only thing I'm asking as a player, if we're going to do this, just make sure I'm getting my second round of bowl gifts. Yeah. All right, like yeah. if we're going to go play in this, we're going to have the trips and all these things, like. You know what? Just give me my, my another another round of bowl gifts, PS5, or whatever the heck these guys are getting right now, and I'd be good with it. I, I hope this doesn't start becoming like this, you know, cascading effect where you see one of them canceled and now, you know, multiple teams are going to start pulling out. And, you know, these protocols, I, I don't fully understand them. And I know that it's, you know, the 5% threshold, and they've got these things that the stuff that they basically just had since last year. The difference right. is between this year and last year's. We basically encouraged slash enforced uh, all of the players to get vaccinated, and on for a large scale, like ninety plus percent, that happened. And to my knowledge, I don't know of any college players that have been hospitalized for you know any type of COVID related illness to the, it's led to that severity. And I know in the last two years it hasn't happened in the NFL, and so I don't understand like. You know, some of the testing procedures and things where we're still testing people that are asymptomatic and then, you know, trying to figure it out on the other side. I, I understand that you want to make sure that there's some safety, but if you look at the safety with the players, none of these guys have suffered any like massive ill effects. Now there's been some myocarditis and different things, but that's been very, very small and minute. So I'm hoping this isn't something gentlemen to where as soon as you see the damn break, sometimes that gives a lot of other people, you know, the opportunity. Like, well, we've got cover now. We wouldn't be the first to do it, and then all of a sudden, you start to see this happening left and right. Yeah, college football. It, it looks as it, I, I'm. I'm just glancing through this today in real time. It looks as though college football is waiting on the CDC to update its guidelines. They will then react to that. Meanwhile, you've got the NFL, who's adjusting its own policy based on their own doctors' recommendations. Right, so like it, it's all based on who you want to look at and adjust with, and if they don't adjust soon, I, we're going to see more than just the Gator oh. Bowl with all this. If they continue to test these, especially after Christmas break, if we're waiting on the government to fix anything in a timely right. manner, right? I mean, listen, buddy, you better start building your casket because you have a better <laughs> chance, better chance of dying in the next forty years before the, before them acting swiftly. Oh, by the way. Over the holidays, bind you. Like I don't think anybody is going to be right. you know, breaking their back in the government position trying to get that thing solved and get it fixed. The difference between you know college sports and the NFL. The NFL is a private industry. These owners are in it to make money. The players are making money, and so they're all incentivized. Which is why we saw some of those games ultimately postponed and not canceled because they know that the the monetary impact that that's going to have if you cancel the game, both on the players and then on the individual clubs and then the league. And so they have that incentive, whereas this is, you know, most of these schools are all public institutions. And so there's like quasi government agencies. And so there's really no incentive for people at the top to, you know, push the envelope and say, hey, 
Let's find a solution as opposed to saying, you know what, the easiest thing for us to do is just to say no. And that way we don't have to deal with any of this. 